out, too. Yeah. You're too dumb looking to leave on the doorstep. <laughs> hey, Rut. I bet your pappy is as ugly as you are. Everybody, Kaze here and welcome to Flicks and Foods. Today's episode, we're going to look at the Robin Williams classic film, at least it is to me, Popeye the Movie. Released in 1980, Paramount Pictures and Disney's Popeye is the movie musical directed by Robert Altman, based off of the comic strip character of the same name. There's, of course, the cartoon adventures that many people know and love, myself included. However, this film covers aspects of the comic strip with the occasional nod to the tune, such as sound effects, musical cues, and how the characters talk. The plot centers on Popeye, played by the late great Robin Williams, a one-eyed sailor with stunning super strength who arrives in the town of Sweet Haven in search of his missing father, Poop Deck Pappy, played by the late Ray Walston. He rents a room from a family called the Oils, a colorful group of characters where he meets the daughter, Olive Oil, played by Shelley Duvall, who is in the middle of planning her engagement party to Captain Bluto, who's played by the late Paul L. Smith a man who runs the town for the mysterious Commodore, and that Olive, along with everyone, points out is that, well, he's large. Large, 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 large. And also has super strength. Popeye encounters adventures in Sweet Haven, such as getting into a fight with these toughs at a diner who is mistreating the patrons, well, some of them, he becomes the adoptive father, or mother, to a baby he named Sweepy, played by Altman's grandson, and more. Will he find his lost father? Will Olive Oil treat him nicely as opposed to her saying, and I quote, You make me sick. As well as stay out the way of Bluto's wrath. Oh, come on, what do you think? The cast, in my opinion, is perfect. This was Robin Williams' first film role and my first memory of him when I was a kid. So I fell in love with how an actor could capture the look and sound of one of my favorite cartoon characters. You can tell he wasn't just like doing this as a gig and appears to have fun with it. And despite his voice, he's not doing anything over the top and it's easy to sympathize with during some of the more tender moments. Bunch of carrots? No, no. You ain't got no carrots, one of those prunes. You got a room for a rink. What? For what? Rink. Rink. Your sign says you got a room for a rink. You know, that's one thing I got. It's a sense of humor. Where did you get that uh, pronunciation? <laughs> Shelley Duvall, as others have said, is the perfect olive oil. And despite the first time I ever saw her was in the uh, fairy tale theater show that I think used to come on Showtime. Hello, I'm Shelley Duvall. Welcome to Fairy Tale Theater. This is a performance I defaultly go to when she pops up in my head. I know others may say The Shining, and I get that. However, she just like rocks it with this performance. Uh, Paul Dooley as Wimpy, who as an adult now is one of my favorite characters from the cartoons. He always puts a smile on my face for his facial reactions and comedic delivery. He really does capture the essence of how the character was, sometimes a little sneaky without being an outright villain. Paul L. Smith as Bluto is a joy to have in this role. I feel his first appearance on screen uh, just could have been a little better. He just shows up out of nowhere, breathing heavily, going, uh, uh, and yelling the town, curfew! And it's, later, it's a better buildup of him just like mainly quiet before we see him really let loose. Ray Walston as Poop Deck Pappy is a scene stealer. He shows up in the third act and his dialogue and lines is great. Me and one of my friends always would quote his lines whenever discussing this movie. Help me! Why, they're just smaller versions of us, you know. But I'm not so crazy about me in the first place. So what do I want one of them? So the visual look of this film is amazing. The town of Sweet Haven has the perfect mix of being cartoony yet believable. Transforming one of the real life islands of Malta into this town is remarkable. So much so that it's still standing and was turned into a tourist attraction which they do performances and many more. One of my bucket list items is to visit there sometime. 
Uh, Harry Nilsson provided the music and wrote the songs. The score has a very orchestrated, uh, theatrical, animated feel to it, especially during any of the fight scenes. I feel the songs are catchy, yet also pretty basic in lyrics, though. Bluto's song is him basically saying, I mean, I mean, over and over again. You know what I say. You know what I mean. The He Needs Me song, which is uh, Olive Oil's uh, song, is, is nice. And it's a good lead way into Popeye's song that he sings to a kidnapped Sweepy. No one ever asked before, before, because they never needed me. But I do. But he does. Go to sleep, sleep, sleepy. Now tell me what you see. And someday when you's older, I'll tell you all about me. My absolute, uh, absolute, <laughs> my absolute two favorites, though, I gotta say, are the uh, I Am What I Am song. It has a great build up, and the lyrics capture a lot of the sayings that a real life Popeye would say. And plus, it's not easy being me. The song Pappy sings to Sweepy as Bluto ties him up. It's comical, nice melody, and just, like, nonsensical. It's not easy being me. Master of me own destiny. And I hate responsibility. It's not easy being me. Shut your lip and open your mouth. If there is anything negative that I have to say about this movie, is, well, except for the parts that I mentioned about the songs, is that the climax just could have been better. Now, I'm going to go into some spoilers, so be prepared. Bluto discovers that Sweepy has an ability to see the future. He kidnaps and uses this to find a hidden treasure that Pappy told him about for years, which always just kind of confused me because... If he can see the future, why would that reveal a treasure? It's not as if he was some sort of detector, but, uh, you know, whatever. Anyway, Bluto kidnaps Sweepy and also Olive because... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Popeye pursues him with Pappy and the other members of the oil family. Bluto finds a treasure and Popeye fights him, getting his ass kicked in the process. An octopus that scared the hell out of me as a kid attacks Olive and Sweepy as Bluto continues to beat up Popeye. Pappy saves Sweepy and the treasure, opens it up, and it turns out it's all the UFO items he had from when Popeye was born. And also a can of spinach, or two, I think. Which, if you know anything about the source material, spinach, this gives Popeye, and in, in some occasions others, uh, enhanced strength. In the cartoons, he eats it regularly and to help overpower Bluto. In this movie, he hates it. Uh, I'm not sure why they went with this choice, but it did make me laugh as a kid, and I was kind of okay with that. Uh, Pappy throws the spinach to Popeye, and Bluto, knowing that he hates it, force feeds him the spinach, and Popeye gets that super strength that we're talking about, and pow, punches Bluto with a huge ass punch, then goes after the octopus, where... On Wikipedia, it says his name is Salty Sam, but I couldn't find any other reference for that name, so there you go. He punches the octopus right out of the water. Uh, we then see a scene of Bluto swimming away as he's literally turned yellow with fear. They sing the Popeye the Sailor Man song, and it ends happily ever after. Yay. My problem with all of this is the trouble that Bluto does. It's only one punch for the full-length feature that gains a victory. We see Popeye fight the Tufts in the diner, a huge-ass boxer named Oxblood, Oxheart, which I thought was Butterbean when I was younger, and even the Octopus with probably like eight hits. These fights last longer than a climactic battle with the Big Bad. In the cartoons, we see Bluto take like multiple hits, and it usually ends with some kind of, you know, funny, demeaning outcome. But this one punch, even as a kid, it, it always bothered me. And, I mean, it is pretty funny seeing him still swimming away as the credits play, but, you know, come on, man. Despite the problems, I feel this was a passion project. And aside the situation of Popeye not liking spinach, the production team knew some important aspects from the source material, especially the comic strip. This guy here, played by actor Bill Irwin, is Ham Gravy, who in the comics was uh, Olive's original love interest slash fiancé until she had left him for Popeye. 
I didn't realize this until doing research for this video. I always wondered why he looked so nervous and was muttering to himself. Apparently, she left him for Bluto in this version, which is why he is saying at her engagement party how this was one of the worst days of his life. Uh, small details like that aren't necessary, but, you know, damn it, I, I appreciated it. And also, he played Mr. Noodle on Sesame Street. I remember seeing that um, when my siblings were watching it when they were younger. I think that if this movie didn't have the production problems it had, uh, starting with this originally coming together because the studio wanted to do a film version of the Broadway musical Annie before discovering they had the rights to Popeye, uh, the cast singing the songs on set instead of a studio first, then lip syncing, tension between the producer who wanted it to reflect the comics instead of the cartoon, along with frustrating the writer and director, we could have had a film with a non-rush ending and a better finished product. Oh, mommy, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, where do I send the flowers? My rating for this is a personal 9 out of 10 for my nostalgia and appreciation for the production value and the casting. However, I will give this a general rating of a 7 out of 10. I feel that the general public would be put off on this, especially some younger viewers who may not have a clue as to who these characters are. I doubt Popeye cartoons even air anywhere, if not on YouTube or possibly some streaming service. I really wish that Guinea Tartakovsky's animated film actually got completed and released because it just would bring the character back to the public eye. Plus, it looked fucking great. Guilty pleasure aside, I just always tell people if you want to go ahead and check out what Popeye the movie would be like, I enjoy it. I never really get tired of watching it, it despite all its silliness. I grew up with it, so maybe it is have a little bit of a nostalgia trip for me. I do point out its flaws, like I said in the review. Um, but let me know, did you like Popeye? Have you seen it, not seen it? Have I encouraged you to go check it out? Let me know in the comments below. I love hearing from you. Please be sure to hit subscribe and ring that bell. And since we were talking about Popeye so much and his food of uh, choice being spinach, maybe that'll be the next food review. We're talking about spinach. In the meantime, everybody, stay safe. This is Kaze saying peace and love to be continued. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You don't like spinach. I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> this spinach. Put a shot.